Hi everyone, welcome to the video lecture series of Theory of Automata and Formal Languages. Uh, we are into unit number one where we are learning about uh, the various, uh, various working of automata and uh, its uh, various types. Okay. So till my previous lectures we have learned, uh, we have got, uh, we have understood a basic uh, idea about how automata is actually working. Okay, and uh, what are the introductory part and what are the different equivalents of these automata and languages, grammars, okay. We have also seen the expressive power of this automata, okay. But uh, this is, this video is very important as uh, we should be aware of why this or where this, opti uh, where this automata concept is being applied, okay. Where it is being, uh, where the applications are being working on. So, uh, as we have uh, understood that automata is being divided into is not like a single machine yet, okay i have we, that has been divided into different different uh, categories like uh, finite automata like push down automata okay then linear bounded automata and turing machine okay so i will not explain the the general applications of an automata i will be uh, into every machine that i'm talking about let it be finite automata let it be push down automata we will talk about the applications of each and each uh, these machines okay so let us start off with the first uh, initial one that is uh, the machine the acceptor is the finite automata which can which can be a dfa which can be a nfa which can be uh, epsilon nfa which can be uh, milli which can be mode machine correct so let us start off with the applications part and uh, the first application of uh, you of the finite automata is uh, designing the lexical analysis of a compiler in the next uh, semester, uh, sorry, in the next semester possibly, or in the fifth, in the third year, you'll be getting a subject named as compiler design, okay? And uh, if you have uh, also undergone the concept of uh, learning C programming, you have used the C compiler nowadays, you have, till now you have understood, uh, you, have, you have gone through different kind of languages. Uh, so what, whatever you are going through, you have to go through a, a part or a, a particular application known as the compiler, correct? So without compiler, you're not able to compile the entire program, correct? So this uh, designing of the lexical analysis of a compiler is being used uh, by finite automata. Now what this lexical analysis says, actually while learning about compiler design, you will be learning about six phases of a compiler, starting with lexical analysis, okay? Actually, lexical analysis is the first phase of when compiler scans the source code. Okay, uh, this process can be from uh, generally from left to right. Suppose I'm having an expression like uh, a is equals to b plus suppose 13. Okay, this is an expression that I'm having. So, what does the compiler does in the first uh, part that is lexical analysis? It generally scans from left to right, character by character, and then group these characters into tokens. Just for example, if I am uh, talking about this A, A is considered A and B is considered as an identifier. Okay, equal is considered as an uh, assignment operator. Plus is considered as an uh, addition operator, and uh, thirteen is considered as a number. So as a whole, lexical analysis, what it does, it generally uh, group these characters into tokens and then identify them. Okay, uh, this is this particular working process is being carried out with the help of finite automata. Okay, next uh, it is also used in text editors while developing a text editors you can use the concept of finite automata where exactly it is used where the matching of patterns or recognizing them is used. Okay, suppose in a text editor you are having certain uh, set of characters, certain set of uh, uh, expressions you have to match those patterns. Okay, for using that you have to use the concept of finite automata. Okay. Now, same way uh, for implementation of spells, uh, spell checkers also you can use because you need to again do the pattern recognition, okay? But at that time also you can use the concept of finite automata. So once we are done with DFA, NFA, epsilon NFA, then all these concepts and it will be, be clear to you that exactly, okay, this is, this is the part where uh, actually it's being used in compiler, it is used in text editors, in spells checkers, it is used. And apart from that, if we, are, if we talk about the electronics engineer student, uh, it's also used in designing uh, uh, if you if, I, if you might be knowing I think so I think previous semester you have learned about I think uh, about this combinational and sequential circuits okay combinational and sequential circuits so in the designing of this combinational sequential circuits also 
uh, you can use the concept of finite automata and uh, which finite automata is used as sequential circuits and combinational circuits comprises of outputs we'll be looking into finite automata with output by using which Mure and mini machine so we'll come across this topic okay. so this is what uh, uh, a little bit of brief about um, sorry I made a, mis made a mistake okay fine so Mure and mini machine okay so this is the basic a applications of where finite automata is used okay you should be aware of it uh, because uh, it will be helpful for you while you you'll be learning about finite automata then you will be coming across okay this is the part where it is being used okay now coming into the next uh, power machine which is more powerful than finite automata is push down automata okay so basically this is an important application uh, it is used for implementation of any stack applications as because the in push down automata we use a memory concept and that is the uh, stack structure we used to use okay then for designing the syntax analysis is also used okay now one more phase uh, you can say the second phase of uh, compiler designing a compiler is the syntax analysis it's all about syntax analysis is nothing but it's all about discovering structure in a code okay suppose it is used to now you might have been used uh, c programming suppose and after a compilation you get some kind of errors as well so it is known as a syntax errors so this is also being carried out with the help of syntax analysis only so it generally determines whether or not a text follows the expected format or not okay so this is the main use of syntax analysis and that is being that is, that can be designed by using pd okay in a compiler so uh, for uh, stack applications already i have told you and for evaluation of any arithmetic expressions this pda can also be a useful one so once you are done with unit number four unit number four comprises of the topic known as pda so once you're done with pda then you will be able to uh, elaborate or you can uh, you will be able to match these applications with what you have learned okay now next machine is a uh, little bit powerful than push down automata is a linear bounded automata okay now uh, this is being used for implementation of genetic programming now what is genetic programming has evolved like anything so for that linear bounded automata is used mechanism is almost similar to what pushdown automata is working but a small difference is there we will be learning that as well and also we will be learning about a concept known as parse tree in unit number 3 and you will be learning about the syntactic parse trees about when you will be uh, learning the subject known as compiler for construction of those parse trees with the help of parse trees you are able to generate particular strings or particular uh, attributes so for that you have to understand the concept of semantic analysis as well so in that particular phase uh, the construction of syntactic parse tree can be carried out with the help of linear bounded automata okay this is one more application and finally coming to turing machine so i will take a lot little bit of time from you okay because uh, turing machine before stating about or explaining anything about turing machine I will get back to a little bit of history part okay so if we talk about in 19 and 19 uh, it starts about like 80 90 years back okay uh, like in 1940s in the middle of 19, 1940s and 1950s the first modern computer was created by Alan, Alan Turing sir and uh, in the year 1936 okay so 1936 generally the the concept of uh, first modern computer came uh, which was developed by Alan Turing uh, what what was the main concept behind designing of that was that to break the German encryption schema okay which was very much helpful in World War II okay that was the first one then uh, thereafter uh, after the invention of this particular machine modern uh, you can say a modern computer it generally provoked the areas of modern computer sciences like uh, randomized algorithms rounding of errors in matrix processing then artificial intelligence crypto analysis okay these are the any different areas that uh, was provoked before because of this invention okay so that much powerful it was and after that uh, just a decade after then in the area in the year of 1946 okay sorry 1964 i've written sorry 1946 a programmable computer was developed and uh, which was used for doing any complex calculations okay if i talk about this programmable uh, uh, computer it was uh, almost like uh, 27 tons in size then 1800 square feet okay in area and of over a hundred thousand calculations can be done uh, that is cps calculations per second can be done 
so that was the evolvement of this particular era then 1946 then next comes 1960s around 1960s around then 1 million calculations per second computer was uh, was evolved and in the year 1969 uh, i would just let you know that a spacecraft uh, was able to use a computer guidance system okay and which was able to safely land the human being on the moon okay that was a great achievement in the year 1969 then in the 1970s this evolvement actually you can you can see when you can you can you can smell this okay in 1970s two major inventions came into existence one is your uh, the first cell phone okay and which was only to 2.5 pounds and 30 minute of talk can be done and 10 hour of charging was also possible okay then uh, and and secondly the gps came into existence uh, where it was it, it helped like anything to the military services for the tracking uh, for location tracking correct then finally in the 1980s the boom of personal computing came into existence then the video games graphic cards audio uh, systems then integrated new softwares okay so like this it came into existence now after 1980s i think you can understand what the scenario is all about why i have spoken all these things i have spoken only for because of this particular area where alan turing sir has developed the particular machine okay uh, which was very much helpful for creating the german encryption schema and which was helped like anything in world war 2 after that the the alan turing sir has also uh, developed this machine turing machine on the basis of its powerful uh, uh, algorithm okay so how does this work you can you can actually check in unit number 5 we will be discussing in brief but this was the most powerful machine till now under which uh, and their processing was based on this powerful machine okay so you can check it out how this era came into existence correct now generally this uh, concept of turing machine in real time right now it's being used in neural networks it's been used in robotics applications it's also been used in at artificial intelligence so uh, this is how i have explained to you what are the different applications because studying any subject is important but studying that subject in three criteria is what is the meaning of that subject how it is being applied and wh- where it is uh, how it is being used and how, where it is being applied these three things you should know it so that's why this applications of automata theory is very important as you are studying this particular subject so i think it's clear to everyone how these applications of different automatas has been Uh, segregated into the different computer applications field okay and i think once you start off with the topics one after another like finite automata pushton automata turing machine you will be able to understand or you will be able to match whatever i have told today okay so i think it's clear to you all and in the next lecture uh, i will be coming across with the topic uh, uh, regarding uh, the finite automata and the different types of finite automata okay and then we will move on with the topics okay So thank you for watching the video you have a, a, any options or any suggestions from your side then please uh, comment down below and do subscribe my channel so that you'll be getting updated videos okay thank you